guys welcome back to my channel today as promised we are going to work on decorating the pages in this heritage keepsake recipe binder and last week we worked on making recipe cards I went ahead and finished them up off screen and today we're going to try to add some of these photo sleeves this kind to the pages and do some other decorating and embellishing. I have a few things here that I wanna add in. I just kinda of put them all in a stack. And then I have a few other little things like these uh, milk cap, milk bottle caps. And, and then I've got a few stickers and things too that may or may not make it in, we'll see. I wanted to try to do maybe kind of like a title page in there, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how it's gonna work. So we'll just see how everything fits together. I also have all these cute little canning labels. I found these at a thrift store. I think they're the cutest. And then I also have these that really are canning labels I bought back in the 90s <laughs> when I was doing a lot of canning and making jam and salsa and canning fruit and all kinds of stuff. So I still have a few left and I think some of these might work as well. So go ahead and get yourselves ready to go all comfy cozy with your snack, your drink and your favorite chair. Hurry right back and then we will get started with this. Real quick, I just wanted to flip through all of these that I got done. So here are the ones that were typewritten, and if you'll recall, I drew the line around the outside edges and decorated them with little bits of fabric or stickers or rickrack, that kind of thing. I like the lines because it kind of looks like stitching, but I was achieving that look without actually sewing it because I thought sewing would interfere on the back when I was trying to write. So these are ones that I have found in other cookbooks. She likes to make her own honey butter, so I thought I'd throw that one in. Anyway, I wanted to write the relevance or significance on the backs of these, so I, I backed them all with, with uh, recipe cards that coordinated. So here are those. I think they turned out pretty cute. And then these, uh, just as something different, I put on in index dividers, you know, the tabbed index dividers. These have alphabets on them and there's absolutely no significance to the alphabet letter. It's just what I had in my stash that was left over and it was really more for the color than it was for the actual <laughs> letter. Her best friend, uh, her last name starts with a Q, so that's kind of a fun one. Not a lot of people whose last names start with Q, that's for sure. I liked this sticker here because it says family recipes on it. And then I can write some of our favorites on them, on these, or she can write hers. And then I just kind of had in mind these could tuck into pockets or what have you. While I was off camera, I went through and prepped the pages. These right here are uh, ones that are just blank and I can either write my own recipes on them for her or she can have them, whatever. Just, just another option like I showed you last week. Here we go. Certain ones like this that already had the lines on the back, I just left it plain because you can write on that pretty easily. There's this one, and then some of them, if you'll recall, I made them a double, double flip or double fold down. This one needs a sticker, but I think I was waiting to see what was left over before I added a sticker, because I want to still embellish the pages. Yeah, so I went through and I cut the pages and prepped a lot of stuff and punched holes and trimmed the extra pages down. I like this one. I think that one turned out really cute. 
Oh, he needs a paper clip. Yes, I was waiting to add the paper clip till I got over here. There we go. There we go. And then these are the ones that just came out of the out of the uh, cardstock that we had, the different ones. So they're just they're already all decorated up, so she can write her own recipes on there. And then there's a couple more from my friend. And then this one is just lined, and so maybe I'll add a sticker to it at the end. See what's left over, because I I want to save some of these stickers and put them on the actual pages and things. So that's. What I also have laces and trims. So I like this one because of the color. This is one I thrifted. This is one I thrifted. I just like, you know, it's crocheted, so it has a little bit of body to it. Another thrifted trim in a matching color. This was actually cut off of a pillowcase that my son-in-law's grandma had done. So this trim here is actually his grandma's work. So I thought that would be good to add onto a page. And then this is one that I snagged out of my mom's sewing box a few years ago. It's left over from when I was a kid. So this is from the 70s, this trim. My mom was making pillows at that time. She was toll painting on pillows and then we were trying to sell them at craft fairs and yeah, that's the whole thing. Anyway, I thought we could add some laces today too. So this video, I've set my timer and we'll just let it go and then it'll probably ro roll over into a second episode. So next week you can catch the conclusion. This little strip of fabric is one I just thought would be cute to line the edge of a page. I have a couple of pages in here that are pretty fragile, so this could just reinforce the, the edge of a page, kind of like seam binding. But I, I went through and trimmed it with my pinking shears so it has the cute zigzag on it. So that's what we've got going today. This I want to use as a title somehow in the front of the book. I'm not sure where I want it. I kind of thought, sorry, where'd you going? I kind of thought about putting it right here. It covers up the pretty picture, but maybe there's enough of it left to see. And if I didn't do that, my other thought was just to include it in here with, you know, punch a couple holes and do that. And then I could write her a little note about the book and my thoughts on putting it together. I think it'd be cutest if it sat right here. Then it's just kind of like a little introduction and I could write my blurb. The other thing I need to do is go through and where all these pages are weak. Uh, okay, let's get to one that is. <laughs> these, the original book pages. I need to go through and add hole reinforcers and I like to ink mine up so they're not just plain white and coordinate them. And then I have a playing card, a couple of playing cards we can use as tuck spots or something. And of course you gotta have your Idaho potato one. And then some of the other cut aparts that I thought would be cute for different, uh, on the in the different categories. I tried to find the ones that I thought most fit the categories that we have in the, in the, um, in the cookbook. I keep wanting to call it a scrapbook and an album. <laughs> it kind of is. I had a great suggestion from one of my viewers, um, Crafty Granny 1965, I think I got your name right, and she suggested putting in photos as well. Now because I've done a lot of scrapbooking, um, I have a lot of photos, but I thought it would be really fun to include some of the extras or ones that my kids haven't seen yet in here. Now you realize I have two daughters. So if I'm making this for one at some point, <laughs> I'm going to have to do something similar for my other daughter. However, my older one really is more into cooking and baking and things, and she loves this. My younger daughter is more simple kind of cooking and not so involved and um, with all the pretty and the froufery of all the pretty pages and colors. She would still appreciate it, but I don't have to go into as much uh, detail and as much decorating and stuff for her. So when I get ready to do hers, it will it will be completely different, truthfully. So yeah, she's the one that just got the house and the dog. So I thought this would be cute to put on a page, Test Kitchen Endorsed, as a title or something. So that's an embellishment. These were ones I thought might I might make into double-sided recipe cards. But then I changed my mind 
and decided to hinge them on a page so that when you open this up, you can write in here. And then this is just a little tab for opening it. So I thought those would be really cute. I've got two of these. This is just for the hinge. So I have two of these that I had set aside and I think they'll be really cute embellishments on a page. So yeah, enough with the chit chat. Let's, let's get moving. So until I decide what I really wanna do with this, I'm not gonna put it anywhere. But the options were to tape it here as a pocket or to include it, I, I think I would put it here so you could still see the cute lady right there. Um, it, uh, punch holes and include it here and write a little note to my daughter on the back. It's the one I'm leaning towards, so we'll see. Now in here, you can see a few of the things that I did to, to um, get the pages ready. One of them was to reinforce these smaller pages and add an extra strip where I could punch the holes and the paper would stay strong. If you didn't catch my series last fall on, on my three fall journals that I made, I kind of explained my process and I have a whole, uh, a whole series where I did a ring binder one for fall and you can go back and watch that. So I will link that right up here for you. And I'll link the playlist down below. It's called Currently Creating and that's what this one is also part of that playlist. So that's essentially projects in process that you can go come along with. This was from that book that had all kinds of cooking quotes in it, and some of them are hilarious. But I, I wanted this kind of at the beginning because it talks, it's just kind of a general statement about mankind is divided into two great classes, hosts and guests. So there's some pretty funny quotes through here as you go along. But yeah, that's, that's one of the things I'll have to do is go back and reinforce those and then write all my notes on the backs of the recipes that I have for her, and I stopped to find a bunch more recipes. I was gonna say, this is getting kind of fat. It's kind of, at first I thought I was in good shape, but then when I added all the papers in, I thought, uh-oh, it's getting fat. She's not gonna have room for her recipe cards. But I have left a lot of writing space in here where she'll be able to fill in. And then also these little paper clips here are marking spots that I really wanted to hit today. So, um, those are adding a little bit of extra space in there. They're taking up some space that probably don't need to be taken up. I try to include a specialty page at the beginning of each section and then one of the card stocks at the beginning of each section. And there's that cool retro kitchen. My best friend across the street, she lived across the street from us when we were growing up, and there, when I see this photo, this is how their kitchen looked. It wasn't this spiffy. It was definitely older by the time I got to see it, but they had this floor and they had this little side spot coming out from the side of the counter. And if we stood at this spot where this photo was taken, the screen door to go outside was just right here. And this was coming into the kitchen. When you came in through their front door, there was like a walk through closet and you went through this coat closet thing. And that's where her grandma slept because they just didn't have a lot of room. My grandma slept in there and then you could walk through and you entered the kitchen from this angle. So when I see this, I remember Betty Jo's kitchen. But like I said, it was not nearly this clean and new and nice by the time I was a kid and looking at that, it was probably 30 years old at that point. And I don't think they had the coral cabinets. They had this floor. I don't remember what color their cabinets were, but our houses were built in the late fifties. So it was a new house when they bought it and it had that style. That's kind of fun to see in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna work my way through the book and we'll figure out what we wanna do. So on these right here, I think it would be fun to either have a sticker or one of these um, cute, little, cute little journal card embellishment things. Actually, what I wanna do, maybe not go through What I really want to do is not go through linearly, but place the ones I know for sure I want where I want them. So this one I want in the cake section. This one I want in the salads. This one I want for the barbecue and outdoor. This is a different kind of baking, so it could be breads. So if she does a lot of baking of bread. And let's see. 
I liked this one. I left the little decorative strip on top. It's not detachable, it's not perforated. So I just scored it, and that means that this won't tear off later. But I turned it into a hinge so it can flip up on a page. I think that'll be cute. This one, I don't know where to put it yet, or these. These are just general. And I thought these two would be cute little embellishments. So as we're flipping through, let's start with the ones I know. And then some of these pages I need to go back and glue, but I don't want to glue on camera. That'll take too long. So let's go with, let's see. Kind of had these in the order they appeared in the book. So this one is cakes. Let me get down here. Sorry, I'm out of frame. Let's go to cakes, fillings, and frostings. This one does not have a belly band or anything. I have a couple spots where there's belly bands too. So we're gonna be kind of jumping around through here just to do the parts that I really wanna get done. I thought this would make a really cute little tuck spot. And I have a bunch of a bunch of extra pieces that might also, you know, if I wanted to reinforce or make extra pockets or what have you, I could do that. So I feel like this isn't big enough to really hold anything, but maybe it is. Maybe it is. We'll see. I'm already getting into a mess. Okay, so let's put you on the cake page. Or actually, should I add her here? She blends in there too much. The other thing I wanna do, because there's plenty of space to write on these title pages, I'm gonna go through and stamp, and then maybe, I have one that says notes, so she could write notes, it'll encourage her to write on it. And, and then I have ones that have like a little whisk or a, or a wooden spoon, that kind of thing. So yeah, we're gonna put that on the back. And I know it's kind of crazy to put a glue mat on top of my glue mat, but I spent an incredible amount of time, <laughs> not too long ago, getting all the glue and everything off of this. I used um, rubbing alcohol, but I could also use some acetone nail polish remover and get some more of these spots off. So I have this little one that came from the Dollar Tree I know, it just seems kind of goofy to have a glue mat over a glue mat, but that's what we're doing. It's like putting a rug over a rug, right? Got my little bobblehead pin for my glue now. It's still hard to see what I'm doing when I'm trying to put it in. But it does not try to rust in my glue bottle. And it's long enough to keep from breaking off in there. So there's that. I kind of want to have to have some kind of embellishment on the main page for every every section. So we'll see where we go here. Okay, putting that back in. I don't want to keep sticking that pin in the glue, but it does have a bad habit of of getting um, all gummed up in there. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to be a rebel, but it may come back to bite me. Okay, this one goes on the outdoor. Candy canning. Oh, let's see. Oh, casseroles and one dish meals while we're here. Let's do that page. So this one, this is a page from that uh, community cookbook and I just backed it onto some cute gingham. Now this is pretty busy up here, so I thought it would be nice to break that up a little bit. But I turned this into a large pocket. I, she commented in the one a couple weeks ago, like who is Chef Judy? <laughs> like it's just a made up person as if it were an old cookbook. But we covered up Chef Judy and just left the cute ovens on the outside. I'm going to glue this down first. So she can, she can put just random recipes or whatever little notes that she wants in this bigger pocket. That'll be handy. I wanna encourage her and all of you who are viewing 
to think of this kind of a uh, cookbook not linearly and by that I mean it doesn't have to be absolutely categorized into sections although it's helpful but to just write things down and have all these blank spaces and little pockets where you can tuck things and they don't necessarily have to be in any particular order to anyone but you kind of take maybe a little more haphazard but kind of take some of the some of the structure out of it in a in a fun way for those of us who are more org organized that's a terrifying thought so <laughs> this runs completely counter to my personality let me know let me tell you but I think it would also be really good to to just have it be that kind of cookbook where you just tuck things in and clip things and and do all that and not have it be all nice and neat and pretty this is this is a work in progress and it's a keepsake and it's also just, you know, something that you don't have to be so careful with all the time. Now, I wanted to put a sticker up here because it's kind of got, I don't know what's on the paper, but it like it got marks on it. But also, that would be a really good spot for a photo. So I'm going to save it for a photo. Okay, the next one is outdoor cooking. I'm pretty sure that came before salads. Oh, here's one I already... I already put this one in place, so let's do this. This is the desserts and candy section. And what I wanted to do with that was I have this recipe here for homemade ice cream. And I wanted to stick it on the flap and then have this sticking out. And then I haven't decided if I want to back this or not, but this is a great writing space. So maybe I could just glue a couple of cards, recipe cards here, or a big piece of paper or something. That would be a good spot for that. But I didn't want, I wanted to just show you on camera how I was doing this one. And then this little journal card makes like an embellishment or a page tab as you turn this. So let's get out the... I was using glue stick on these recipe book pages because it was, I was right, they do curl up. And um, the thin pa paper just curls up with the wet glue. So when I was trying to glue these strips onto these pages from this cookbook, I was having trouble. They were warping and then they weren't laying flat. So that that's something to be aware of. So that was giving me a little bit of trouble that I didn't really need. Now I'm gonna give you a quick little tip. Now these these little sticky things are initially repositionable, which means if it doesn't go on quite right, you can move it. But if you have your tapes and things, I learned this trick a few years ago from somebody I was watching. You can run over them with your glue stick and it will make it initially repositionable so that you have the freedom to move this around if it doesn't land in the exact right spot. And it allows the sticky tape to slide a little bit and then it will eventually grab and it's stuck in place. But it gives you, it gives you the um, ability to work with it a little bit. Okay, so I wanna glue that like right here. Make sure I'm getting the correct side because you know, it could happen. More likely than not that I would glue the wrong side down. Okay. And that just adds a cute little element. You could make this a tuck spot and just glue it a little bit there and tuck a tag on the back side, but I, I didn't really care today. If this was a regular journal and not a cookbook journal, I probably would have done that. So I want this one to flip open, which means it probably needs a little paper clip up there just so she knows. Next, next category. Okay. Oh, this is in the same section, and it was so big. I know she's going to fill it up, so I gave her two spots, two decorative pages in here. So let's get this one, too. And this one has the waterfalls 
actually maybe I'll wait because it does have the waterfall so I'm gonna wait and come back to this because I want to do all the waterfall pages together and then whoops oh see I didn't glue the pocket down yet so all my holes are now out of alignment there we go let's put that back in this page, the next page, this is that recipe that I told you about, is the gingerbread recipe. Same one that my mom has in her Betty Crocker cookbook. So since we all make that a lot, I'm going to give it its own special tab. I'm going to put it right in the middle. And then I haven't decided if I want to just like cover these, because these are good recipes too or um, how I'm gonna put my note about this. But we'll figure it out, because these are all really good, good cake recipes. But for now, we'll put the tab on the top. Where you need to go. And we will just mark this page, and maybe I'll put like a banner on it or something. Could you hear that? Maybe I'll put a banner on it or something or maybe a flip out kind of a thing so she can read or maybe I'll just put another page over the top of it. I don't know. Or maybe I'll just jot a note right here. <laughs> I haven't decided yet, as you can tell. Okay, there's that one. Eggs and cheese. I really wanted to put the uh, paper that had the little chickens on it here, but the yellow clashed with this yellow, so that's all right. That's all dairy, so this guy is going to be a belly band, and I also wanted to, here, yeah, let's cover you. Also wanted to add some trim to that one. Just to make it pretty. Probably just on one side. Or what do you guys think? Should we do it on both sides? Yeah, we could do it on both sides. That's good. Let's do that. First, we gotta measure. So last week, I was talking away to you all, but that that video got so long that I decided to just speed it up instead. And you know what? It was perfectly understandable, even without me talking. <laughs> so, <laughs> this week I want to talk a little bit. You might be tired of me. I don't know. I'm going to cut that one right in the middle of the scallop. And trim him up a bit down there. Okay. I really like this trim. For some reason, red is hard to find. Maybe people just use it up so there isn't any to land in the thrift stores, but red is a very hard one to find, seems like. Okay. Oh, better cover him up or he'll dry out. And we'll get out the Fabri-Tac. Got out all the glues this time. that one you might need this one's kind of hard to tell the right side and the wrong side but the right side is definitely brighter and he probably needs a little more glue under the side here so let's put another line let's see there we go, there's that one. And now we'll do this side. Which way are you gonna lie down? There we go. Do a zigzag this time, cover the whole area. Okay, I'm doing a spiral. Yeah, since this has this scallop along the edge, it's easy to line it up straight with the edge of the paper. 
and know that I got it on there right. Let's trim that piece off. And this one's not straight either. I'm using my fabric scissors because it's fabric. And then, let's see, you're going to go this way, and then this will go this way. I'm going to scoot it out a bit so that it's not stuck right up against the rings. Okay. And we're going to use Fabri Tac to glue it on. Partly because it's in my hand and partly because there's this little bit of fabric here on each side. So that will ensure that this sticks down correctly. So I hope you guys have been able to um, craft along. I know Alicia at Hearts Arts, she's crafting along and making one of these for herself. So I do have a Facebook page, guys, and even though I've kind of abandoned it, I don't know, is, is it possible for you to upload pictures of what you're working on there, or do I have to change the permissions or something? Because that would be a perfect place when you're working on stuff to, to show what you're working on and tell me that it's there so I can go check it out. If you don't tell me, I just don't, I won't go. Because <laughs> I don't check that all the time, so that's why it's good for me to know. Now this might be, let's see, this has to do with dairy, that's canning. This is baking. I was wondering if this would be a good spot for one of these stickers. Hmm, gonna wait, gonna wait. Just not 100% convinced yet. It's like you, you do the first round of embellishments and then go through and do the second round of embellishments. Okay, so this category, Jiffy Cooking, can you see that? I forgot to wet my wet my dried out baby wipe. That's probably going to come back to bite us in a minute. This one of Jiffy Cookie Cooking, they also include barbecue and outdoor stuff, which in my opinion, I don't think they go together, but in 1950 whatever, it did. There's that spam again. Okay, I love this page. I had to point out. <laughs> so first of all, I have this poor pizza recipe that was very much like the one my mom used to make where we just poured the crust over the ingredients and let it all bubble up. Look at this, there's a verse on there. I didn't realize. I'll have to cover over her name too. And then I can write my note down here. When I say verse, I don't mean Bible verse. I mean poem. That's nice. Anyway, so my um, my point was, this is about pizza, but then the page I put in, this one says, if you have few standards and no patience for details, better send out for a pizza. <laughs> so I guess maybe we've raised it our standards a bit and have not sent out for pizza, but made our own. And then this other quote right here. <clears throat> If this is coffee, then please bring me some tea. But if this is tea, please bring me some coffee. <laughs> That's from Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> I know how you feel, sir. Okay, so what I was trying to say is, I don't know if I want this one here. Oh, here, here's outdoor cooking. Yeah, I don't want it there. I want it here. We'll do another tab on this spot. And I think I might move him up a little bit, so it's the focal point. Let's see if I want you on this side of the page. Sorry, I'm trying not to mumble. It's not always easy to remember, but it is annoying when you're the listener. There we go. Maybe I'll put my potato playing card on the vegetable page. What do you think? We, uh, we every year like to go and get go and get fresh potatoes, a box of them. So my husband just did that yesterday. He was out of town and on the way back, stopped in southeast Idaho and picked us up a box of fresh potatoes. 
50 pounds for $10, folks. And then we just leave them out in the garage where it's cool and um, eat off of them all winter long. It's so good, so good. And then we share with my mom and our kids and whoever else we feel like. Okay, that one was pastries. This is salad. I want to go to the salad page. Oh, look, and her shirt matches. Hooray. That was a happy happenstance. I feel like she needs something behind her, though, so that she stands out a bit. Let's do that. And then I think, honestly, that's going to be it for this session, believe it or not. Okay. What I'm gonna do is glue her down, but then make the bigger back piece into a pocket. Or tuck spot, really, because it's not three sides, it's only two. So let me cut this down really fast. able to fix my my little corner chomper here now I told you in the last video and then I edited it out but this is this is how we made them in the 90s <laughs> we they <laughs> this is how I purchased it it's from the mid 90s when I started scrapbooking they were very oops I just dropped all my recipe cards they're very heavy duty which was nice and I really like it because the little scallop which I showed you last time I'll show you again it's just cute and dainty and there's they don't make anything with that exact scalloped edge but I do have to be careful because as you saw it gets stuck on the smaller papers okay so I want this side and this side very nice Well, that was a quick half hour. So we'll stop here and then we will catch up in the next episode and hopefully get a little bit further. So now I'm gonna clear this away and then we'll do our inspiration for the day. To close today, I wanted to read one of these quotes that I included in Katie's recipe book. This one is by Aesop. It says, a crust eaten in peace is better than a banquet partaken in anxiety. And that caused me to think about Proverbs 17, 1, which also says, better a dry crust with peace and quiet than a house full of feasting with strife. So I don't know if Solomon came first or Aesop came first, but they both had the same thought in mind. Um, it's just nice to eat your meal in peace and quiet, even if it's simple than to have a fabulous banquet that's filled with tension and, um, and anxiety, strife, arguing, family arguments. As you go through your week, just keep in mind that you are people who bring peace, who are spreading peace where you go, that family is often bound together by these rituals that we have, meal times and holidays, and endeavor to be the person that brings family together around a peaceful table. Until next time, I want you to be inspired and do something creative today. Bye-bye.